Hey musicians, wanna know how to get gear endorsements? Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Adam, welcome to the channel. My goal is to help you make good money playing music. If that sounds like something you'd be into, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. As a working guitarist, I have managed to land a couple of gear endorsements, the biggest ones being orange amplifiers and pedal train pedal boards. As a content creator, I've gotten opportunities to preview products from companies like Gibson. So I've gone through this process a few times and I wanted to talk about what I've learned as well as some insight from other people I know in the industry. First thing you need to realize is that an endorsement is usually not just a way to get free gear. Typically an endorsement doesn't include any free gear at all. They're usually just discounts, and those discounts are typically tiered based on how popular or famous you may be. The ironic part being that the people who are the most famous can usually afford the gear that they don't have to pay for. Anyway, as I was saying, gear companies have very little incentive to just pass out free gear. There is no business model that works for them to just hand stuff out to anybody who asks. Endorsements are partnerships. In order for a company to be willing to endorse you, there has to be something in it for them. What gear companies are looking for is eyeballs or earballs. The main reason a company would want to endorse you as a musician is so that people who follow you or go see your band shows see you playing their stuff and in turn want to pick some up for themselves. It's basically just advertising for them. So if you want to get endorsed by a company, you have to have something to offer. They're usually looking for a very busy playing schedule at a particularly high level, a large social media following, and potentially other endorsements that you've already landed, or some combination of all of those. It doesn't necessarily involve how great of a player you are. It it is incredibly rare to get an endorsement based off of talent alone. Now, there's always exceptions to the rule, but that's typically how it goes. If you don't have a large following, either online or in meat space, your likelihood of getting an endorsement is particularly low. This is why I keep saying that social media and personal branding is so important for musicians who want to stand out. It's also why you're seeing a lot of quote unquote influencers getting signature guitar models over someone that you perceive to be more revered. It's simple economics. They have have large fan bases and those fan bases have disposable income. If you want the same opportunity, you're going to have to figure out how to do that for yourself. Okay, let's say you meet those three requirements I mentioned earlier. How do you actually land the deal? In my experience, it all comes down to contacts and conversion. If you know someone at a company who does this kind of thing personally or met them through your music, your likelihood of getting a shot is significantly higher. I got my orange endorsement in part because my band used to play shows with another band who happened to have one of their artist relations guys in it. I met my contact at Gibson because our kids go to the same daycare. Who you know matters. Outside of personal relationships, you're gonna have to cold call. If you start looking around, some companies actually have endorsement forms that you can fill out on their websites. Those companies are typically smaller and looking for legitimacy in the market, and they're gonna be hungry for talented working musicians to vouch for their gear. Most larger companies have an AR department, which stands for Artist Relations. Note I didn't say A&R. Those are the guys that take your band out to dinner and promise you a bunch of cool stuff only to ghost you after the showcase or so I've been told. Anyway, artist relations people are the ones who make these kinds of partnerships happen. They are not always the easiest people to track down though. Most of them don't have front face and contact info and you probably won't find them on the company's website. Again, that's not always the case. Schechter to their credit has their AR email directly in the footer of their website. LinkedIn may be a creative route to find these people, but they're usually hard to track down for a reason. For instance, Alex Oksher who works for Victory Amps and their AR department is a terrible human being who nobody should ever meet. I'm kidding. Kidding. Ultimately, you as a musician have to be able to provide some sort of value proposition to them in order for them to consider you as an endorsee. Here's a personal example. Back in March, I made a video about custom guitar picks. I had a contact with a company that makes them and requested a discount code that I could put on YouTube and my socials. I put that code and a link to their website on my link tree and a few other places. Since then, the link tree alone has netted them 174 leads. Now, I don't have exact numbers on completed sales, but if I were to approach another gear your company, I would provide that number, the click-through rate, and my follower account to show that not only do people pay attention to what I'm doing, but they also follow through. If you want to find out more about gear endorsements, you can check out my interview with Alex from Victory on the podcast. The link is in the description. Any other questions about this topic, you can leave in the comments. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We post new videos every single Friday. Also, like I mentioned before, check out the Cover Band Confidential podcast. We're closing in on 300 episodes covering all the ways that you can make good money playing music. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you next time.